What are we learning from Pfizer this morning? Well, uh, Jonathan, this is um, incredible data, I have to say. I mean, I haven't seen data, but reading the press release, the, it's beyond what I expected it to be. It's above 90% protective in terms of efficacy. And it's not on just that 32 patients that we were worried about that they might come out too early. It's on 94 cases. So, um, you know, I, I really don't think it could have got any better than this at this stage of the readout. The data can change when more patients are recorded, et cetera, et cetera. But at this stage, it could not have got been better. <clears throat> Sam, we're thrilled to have you on today with your work out of uh, Cardiff and your doctorate in pharmacology. Let's go to the efficacy of the moment. Measles is a 97% success rate. Dr. Fauci and others have talked about a 75% success rate. So scope for us the success of a 90% efficacy for this RNA vaccine. Yep, so... Um Tom, if you think about it, flu vaccines range from, I mean, that we've even seen efficacy at low 30s or 20s, up to about 60% protection. So here, when, you're, when they're talking about above 90%, and let's not forget the primary endpoint of this trial, the aim, the initial aim of the trial was to reduce coffin and, and fever. So what we would love to see is that that then means that the actual severe cases are much, much lower than uh, what you would uh, expect in a normal setup. And if I may add, another element that's really exciting here is that this technology lends itself very well to developing very many versions of this. So if, God forbid, the mink Danish mutant ends up being a virus that can surpass this particular vaccine, it, you know, it took them six months to do this. They can do it again. That's the beauty of this technology. Sam, what is the next step for Pfizer? I think our audience worldwide has an understanding of phase one, phase two, phase three. What is phase Fazelli right now for Pfizer? Yeah, so these guys are, have clearly got enough data now. 94 cases is a pretty decent number to go to the regulators and ask for what's called emergency use authorization. Unfortunately, we have to check our enthusiasm a little bit, continue to wear our masks, and keep our distances, because they've only got 50 million doses by the end of the year. Next year is a different story, 1.3 billion doses. But don't forget, the next one that we'll hear from in the next couple of weeks will be Moderna. It may not be as effective, but it still could be quite a useful weapon when you're trying to get the world back to normal in terms of trying to get vaccinated, as many people vaccinated as possible. Sam, that's exactly where I wanted to go, the rollout of some of these vaccines, how quickly we can use it as a circuit breaker to try to stop the COVID surge that we're seeing now. How likely is it that the, that the safety data that we're looking for is going to be sufficient to give people confidence to start unrolling this in mass with billions of doses, as you say? Yeah, so you've got to have to accept some risk there. You know, when we get to, um, when we get to, the, to next week, I think, there or thereabouts, the Pfizer should have about two months of data on about 20,000 people, uh, 10,000 of whom would have been vaccinated. Give it another two months. <coughs> by the time this thing is approved and decent volume comes in, there will be even more safety data. We should not just get too comfortable with this because this is still an experimental vaccine. It is a complex disease. So, but what we've seen so far is, I think, the best that we could have expected at this stage.